Hello guys and welcome to Free Words Crew and welcome to the 75 day hard generative AI challenge and this is day 2 and in this video we will tell you about the neural networks and in this video we will learn that what are neural networks and what are the types of neural networks and why neural networks are used in generative AI. Okay, so let's start the video. The first question is what are neural networks? So neural networks are computational models composed of layers of interconnected nodes basically called as neurons and neural networks process input data learn patterns and make predictions or classification and this is all based on the neural network and their internal structure and we can also see that the components of the neural network contains the input layer the hidden layers and the output layers the input layer contains that the data that you can input to the uh, neural network and the hidden layer have some kind of a pre-processing unit that can perform many kind of operations on the data to do the feature extraction, feature uh, generation as well and also to normalize the data as well. And in the output layer that produces your network output, it can contain two or more number of neurons based on the task. As example, in the binary classification, the output layer contain only two neurons, but in multi-class classification, the output layer can contain the more neurons as well. Okay, so now let's go for the type of neural networks. Okay, so the, the neural networks are basically of three types, which are basically used in the uh, generative AI or all the deep learning domain. The first are the feed forward neural networks. So the feed forward neural networks actually forward the data in only one direction from input to output without any feedback loop okay the feedback loop means it can see that at the end what is my output it compares that output with the expected result and then uh, transfer back the feedback the error the mean squared error or the marginal error to back to the neural network so that it can adjust their weights and run that loop again Okay, so that loop is not present in the feed forward neural network. They are actually present in the back propagation neural networks. Okay, so these kind of feed uh, forward neural networks are like good for the task like uh, pattern recognition and classification as well. Okay, and when you just enter the initial data to the input layer, it get multiplied by their weights of the model. And then the weighted inputs are then summed together to form a total and that total is transformed by the activation function to add non-linearity into the data that gives us the output okay we, we can learn about all the activation functions in our next video we'll explain that what are activation functions and when to use and when not to use and what are their advantages and disadvantages as well okay so here is the python code for the feed forward neural network and it is just a binary classification problem that use the uh, ReLU activation function and uh, also use the sigma activation functions in the output layer and this is how you can like build a small uh, neural net network code by using the tensorflow as well and in our project videos i can also explain each of these neural network with the big final end-to-end -end projects as well okay guys okay so now let's move to our next type of neural network which is convolutional neural network so convolutional neural net networks are actually designed for image classification tasks because it includes the convolutional layers with activation function, max pooling layers, fully connected layers, flatten layer and also the dense layer with the output activation function. The convolutional layers are actually helpful for feature extraction because it converts it into the lower dimension because as, as we know the image data is very high dimensional. So make it understand for a neural network, these layers help them to extract the feature and also lower the dimensionality of the data as well. And you can see there, it is a small code of again a binary classification with convolutional neural network with the CONV 2D layer along with the max pooling layer and flatten layer and the dense layer. So this all layers are used to extract the features of the image along with to lower the dimensionality and at the end layer we have a sigma function that results in only binary outputs all right guys okay so now the next type type is recurrent neural networks so the recurrent neural networks are basically used for the sequence data because it is derived from the feed forward neural networks it exhibits the similar behavior on how human brain works 
but recurrent neural networks uh, produce the predictive results in sequential data that other algorithms can't because it it also have a feedback loop which is not exist in the feed forward neural networks and because of that uh, feedback loop it can uh, remember the information of the previous time enabling them to capture the temporal dependencies between the data so it can understand that in a sequence or or, or just in a time series data what actually happened in the past and what is the dependency of that past in the few future as well okay oh guys okay so now see just a simple binary classification function here along with the recurrent neural network we can use a simple uh, rnn here and it can predict the uh, output in the form of 0 and 1 you can use these codes to run and check that what is the difference between the output accuracy and eval evaluation you can get out of these all codes okay oh guys now our next uh, question is why neural networks are used in generative ai okay so neural networks are at a forefront of the generative ai offering powerful tools for pattern recognition generating modeling creative content creation adaptability and realistic simulation their ability to capture and mimic complex pattern in data make them essential for pushing the boundaries of what is possible in the generation of artificial intelligence and this is the transformer architecture that works on neural network simply rnn because it is a sequential data problem to to generate a content and shows that the architecture of a encoder and decoder with self attention mechanism oh guys so we we will study deep down in, into these uh, deep neural networks nlp as well and all this kind of thing in our uh, next videos and in our next video of day 3 we'll learn about the activation functions and how they work when they are used and when not to use and what are the advantages and dis disadvantages of activation functions along with the python implementation so just be with it and if you want to learn more about prompt engineering uh, python data science machine learning you can watch the videos on my youtube channel and along with you can read the blogs of uh, generative ai data science and machine learning on my medium profile thank you guys thank you so much we'll meet in our next video